Hi there, my name is Niall Meller from Acoustic Frontiers. Acoustic Frontiers is a DEX dealer based in the United States. We ship DEX products globally. You can find us on the web at www.acousticfrontiers.com. Today's video is going to be about the DEX's speaker calibration functionality. Speaker calibration functionality in the DEX basically corrects for the frequency response the phase and the group delay characteristics of the individual speaker drivers. This is very powerful um, because most of the issues in today's systems are related to the speakers and their characteristics. Performance of our electronics such as amplifiers, CD players is very good in terms of frequency response, phase, etc. Whereas our speakers, even the best ones, are very poor generally. So. To, to calibrate speakers, we'll click on the Calibrate Speaker button. I'm going to create a new speaker calibration today. A biamp, and there are also some other options here too. Single amp, triamp, and a subwoofer calibration. Using a measurement that I've already taken, we'll use the first one, one meter on axis. We'll give it a name, one meter on axis calibration demo. So once we've done that, the DEX software walks us through a number of different steps. The first step is to select the measurement window what this refers to is the amount of time before reflections interfere with the measurement. This is why we and DEX recommend that you measure your speakers outside if possible, or if not, in a, in a room, in the center of the room, as far away from boundaries, the side walls, the floor as possible. Because the longer you can extend the time window before you have reflections, the better your correction filters are going to be, and the lower in frequency they're going to extend. And this is the uh, the bar you would drag to move your filter. Now Dex does this does set this automatically, but it's possible for you to override it just by dragging here. And you'll see that as I'm dragging, Dex is saying what that correction window is. Does it take 11.5 milliseconds of information before cutting everything off, or does it take say 15 milliseconds? So we'll just put it back to a time window here, about 10 milliseconds, which is before this first reflection that you can see. And these peaks generally refer to reflections. I'll click on the next step. So the next step is to choose the level of measurement smoothing. This is how much uh, smoothing is applied to the measurement. You see there's a choice between 0 and 100%. 0% looks something like this. 100% like this. And as Dex said, the best level is normally 100%. Um, it is very useful sometimes to look at the measurement at a lower level of, uh, sorry, a higher level of resolution, 0%, because you can spot issues that are related to the individual speakers. Quite often these peaks here are, are related to resonances within the speakers themselves, either the drivers or the enclosure that might tell you need to do some work on that before trying to correct the uh, the response and the group delay characteristics. So it's always good to look at the measurements at different levels of smoothing. So the next part is where you choose the crossover frequency. Remember this is a biamp, so two drivers, a woofer and a tweeter. And you can see here that um, there's some different uh, measurements have appeared or some different data elements. We've got a woofer crossover filter. That's the red line and also a tweeter crossover filter. It's possible to change the the uh, the frequency of the crossover by dragging and you can see it's updated in the uh, frequency bar at the top of the window. So let's say if let's set a frequency crossover of 1525 and we're going to say 48 dB per octave filter. You can also use this um, this leg here to drag and change the slope of the filter between 48 and 300. We'll leave it at 48.
The next thing you have a choice of is the actual max boosts and cut limits. And the way to interact with these is again in the window, you can drag the box to choose the upper correction limits. So, it, so in this instance, what this refers to is I'm going to only allow cuts to about minus six dB and I'm going to allow only gains to about eight dB. And you can see I have a choice of adjusting these correction windows each side of that crossover point that I selected. This, this, this refers to the crossover point. The next part is to determine the, uh, the group delay phase response correction. And here you can play with different parameters about what the maximum amount of delay you want to allow um, before the DEX corrects for it. So you want to allow a maximum of three milliseconds delay for group delay. Maybe you want to correct the magnitude, uh, the frequency response very closely, tightly. Or maybe you want to allow a bit more deviation, say one dB. And you might change these depending on how accurate your measurements are. Finally, you need to choose the name of the correction set. So let's call this test speaker correction filter. And you can see now what the DEX is doing is actually preparing the calibration filter. It's preparing the speaker response adjustment after a while it'll say it's finished and you can see here in the parameters window is actually what has been created and the results too the DEX has quite a sophisticated process for checking if drivers are out of phase and uh, auto corrects those if they are So the final step, now you have your correction filters applied and you see each of these measurements here refers to the correction filter. So if we look at these individually, this is the woofer, this is the tweeter. So you can see the corrections applied have mostly been cuts around the crossover frequency here and slightly higher up. And then the, the response of the response of both of the filters combined is basically a flat line, which is what you want essentially. The next step is to configure the DEX. So this is basically where you're going to go back to the, uh, the configuration profile setup that I showed you in another video. Um, we want the biamp with mono subwoofers here. We'll call it test speaker configuration. What you're actually going to do then is load in the correction filters. So double click on the speaker. We want to use a correction filter. We'll choose our correction filter. Correction filter six is the one I've just created. Okay. And we'll do the same for this speaker. There we go. And then once you've done that, you would then save everything to the DEX. Remember that that's saving the correction filters and those correction filters incorporate driver crossovers and they incorporate the actual speaker driver correction for frequency response, group delay, etc. So in this video today, I've just shown you how you can use the speaker correction uh, functionality of the DEX. Um, thanks for watching. You can find us on the web at acousticfrontiers.com. My name is Niall Meller.